How's it growing? In our main growing season, it's always exciting to try to grow what I call the conventional veggies like carrots, cucumbers, tomatoes. Wait, can you imagine growing a bountiful supply of nutritious spinach for your family that grows on a tree that thrives on neglect? What if we told you that this spinach tree is more nutritious than the spinach you can buy at the grocery store? Crazy, right? Well, let me tell you about this spinach tree. Wait, that was my line. Oh, sorry, man. There are a number of perennial tropical spinaches that are so easy to grow here. They're drought and pest resistant. They're not fussy about soil. They thrive in our summer heat. And my very favorite is chaya. I've heard people say they don't like chaya because it's tough. Yeah, and that's why you want to stick around to the end of the video where I show a very simple fix for that. Now Bo is going to tell us about the nutritional content. It has as much protein as an egg. Chaya is a great source of iron, calcium, vitamins A, B, and C. And it was a staple food for the ancient Mayan culture. Hey Bo, why are you in Frankie and Richie's yard? Yeah, they were nice enough to let us show off their spinach tree. And it's such a beautiful example of how you can use edible landscaping. I mean, David, look at this. You would never know that Frankie and Richie are growing something more nutritious than spinach in their front yard, and a lot of it. This is a deeply lobed chaya, which attracts butterflies with its white blossoms. Can you believe Frankie started this as a small cutting? It's one of the two most commonly grown varieties in Florida. And we'll talk about these two, as well as my favorite, the jumbo leaf. I'll explain the glove later. Today we'll learn how to propagate, grow, harvest, and cook chaya. And it must be cooked before it's edible. Yeah, it's unfortunate that some people shy away from chaya because of that. I was one of those, but I'm so glad I got past that because it's super easy to cook the way I do which I'll demonstrate, Taya does have hydrocyanic glycosides, which are deactivated by cooking it for at least five minutes. But other sources say 15 to 30 minutes. Yeah, but according to UF IFAS, at least five minutes. And I'll demonstrate how I cook Taya so it really cooks longer than that, just to be sure. But for now, let's talk about this amazing plant. The maple leaf chaya is a popular variety here because you can get a better yield from each leaf without having to worry about those stinging hairs, which I'll explain later. My main maple leaf chaya is a great example of growing it in a small space. I keep this cut way back underneath the elderberry bush. Starting new chaya bushes with stem cuttings is super easy. Each place where a leaf grew is called a node. And when you're pruning any plant, it's always best to prune above the node where a new branch can grow. For the stem cutting itself, simply trim off the extra part below the bottom node. Then all you gotta do is stick it in the ground with one to three nodes buried. Roots will sprout out of those nodes into the soil. A shout out to my friend Judy Golkov, who gave me my favorite variety, the jumbo leaf. These leaves can get up to 15 inches across. She gave me a cutting of it, and it was about half this size with, uh, with three nodes, and all you need is one node to go in the soil. This cutting, I totally forgot about. I cut it over a week ago. Look, it's still viable. I'll stick it in the soil and it'll grow. But it is recommended to let the cuttings dry out for a few days. And this is especially true with the jumbo leaf. Chai it is just so amazingly easy to grow. It's incredibly drought tolerant and pest tolerant, unless you have iguanas. And if you have a problem with iguanas, I recommend checking out this other video. And if you don't see the link up here, it'll be in the description also. Chaya grows great as an understory bush, in the shade, or in full sun. In harvesting chaya, it gets pretty sappy, so I always like to use gloves. I like to wash the leaves. You most likely won't find any insects, but just in case. I'm just gonna chop this. It just boils better if it's chopped up. And when cooking it, avoid using aluminum. It might sound a little odd, but there's actually a chemical reaction that chaya has with aluminum. And that can give you the runs. Yeah, I can make you sick, so I just use stainless steel. As mentioned earlier, some say to boil it for five minutes, others say 15 to 30. Personally, I like to cook mine in a rolling boil for five minutes. Some sources say to boil it without the lid to let it vaporize with good ventilation, and I've not been doing that at all, and it hasn't affected me. But if it makes you feel any better, lose the lid. And here's the trick. Even after turning off the burner, I leave that pot on the hot burner 
to cool off slowly. After about 30 minutes, I strain it, chill it in the fridge, then I make a nutritious, delicious green smoothie. So I'm just gonna add this along with a few garden fresh greens, frozen mangoes, bananas. Or you can cook chaya just like you would spinach once it's been boiled for five minutes. There are a couple reasons I recommend wearing gloves when harvesting and preparing the chaya. And that is that the sap could irritate the skin, although that hasn't been an issue for me. I just don't like the messy latex type of sap while working with it. Secondly, varieties like the jumbo leaf can have stinging hairs and usually on the back of the leaves. I've been growing this for about a year and really haven't had an issue with stinging hairs until... Ouch. You gotta be kidding me. The filming of this video. It was the first sting. It felt like a bee sting. Some say that it feels like stinging nettle. Why'd you take the gloves off? Yeah, live and learn, right? Live and learn. Earlier we were saying how some people don't like chaya because it's tough. But there's a simple little thing that you can do to prevent that. Show us that trick, David. Yes, and actually the texture of the leaf holds up amazingly well after cooking. But there's one part of the leaf that may not always cook well, and that is where the veins converge right up here, especially on mature leaves. So either you can use the stack and cut method or simply pinch that part off. And this is why I prefer to use the vinyl gloves. Mmm, delicious and nutritious. You ready, Bo? Live regeneratively and let's grow together.